as you heard, my name is pronounced just like it's spelled, uh, Kreutzer. Uh, don't worry, there'll be a, there'll be a clip later. Uh, a little bit about me to get things started here. I'm from here in Portland. I've lived here about 20 years. If you're here visiting, uh, like TK is, then you probably want to move here. That's normal. Uh, make sure you visit in October before you make that decision. <laughs> but uh, it's a great city. I uh, work at New Relic on the Ruby Agent team. Hi, Ruby Agent team. They're here. Um, we make software for developers and applications that help you write software. If you write code professionally or as for fun, and you haven't heard of us, you should change that probably. Specifically, I work on the New Relic uh, Ruby Agent team. New Relic RPM is the gem that we maintain. We maintain the gem that actually goes in your application and collects data and sends it back. If that sounds interesting, you should probably talk to me. Um, especially if you live or you want to live in Portland, Seattle, San Francisco, Phoenix, Dublin, or Barcelona. We have tons of jobs. And I actually have a special bit.ly uh, that you can go to. We'll get you all tagged up. So uh, one more New Relic thing. We have a lot of us here at the conference, both speaking and attending. I'm going to do a quick uh, pitch for my buddy's talks. Jason Clark is giving a talk on the testing framework that we've set up for the Ruby agent uh, later today in this very room. Zoe K is giving her first ever conference talk tomorrow, so you should definitely come and support her on that. And then two talks that were yesterday that you should see the videos of. Ward Cunningham, the wiki guy, gave a talk about Federated Wiki, and Jonan, who I called out earlier, gave an awesome, hilarious talk about Minecraft. So check those out. Um, I wanted to make sure everyone knew where to find me. My Twitter handle is very complicated. It's just my name. I put it helpfully on the corner of all my slides, just in case you need it. I would love to talk to any of you on Twitter. I use it all day long. So please feel free to reach out and say hello. So I am super excited about this talk because it combines two of my favorite things, computers and music. Computers is my profession. Music is my hobby. I made that decision very early in my life, and I'm very glad that I did, because music is a really rough way to earn a living, it turns out. And computering is working out just fine. <laughs> um, but this talk specifically was inspired by a uh, musician here in Portland, who I've gone to see uh, a couple times, and actually played with a couple times too, who's made a name for himself in the smooth piano, lounge, kind of jazzy scene. Um, kind of new agey almost. Um, the kind of music that tends to have album covers that look like this. <laughs> <laughs> or more accurately, like this. <laughs> and he's, he's famous. Um, he does Valentine's Day shows every year because, of course. And my wife and I went to one of these shows, and he's very, very good. Don't get me wrong. This guy is immensely talented. He's a fantastic pianist, much better than my hacking away. And I begrudge him nothing of his success because he's making a good living doing what he loves, and that's all we can ever ask for. But um, during, during the show that we were at, he clearly plays three or four tunes, gets everyone kind of going and into, the, uh, into the groove of things, everyone's having a good time. And then he stops, and he says, now is the time for audience participation. And he says, he picks a random person out of the audience, and he says, give me four musical chords. And musical chords, letters A through G. So they'll say, um, a, C, F, G. He'll be like, okay. He'll think about it. He'll play it a couple times. Then he'll do something kind of like this, except much better. audience is going, that's incredible. How did he just make up this music out of nowhere using random notes, clearly not a planted person, how did he pull this off? And I'm sitting there with a very different expression <laughs> <laughs> thinking, I can do that, as I just did. And I'm not very good at it. He's much better at it than I am. But then I thought to myself, well, this guy makes a good living, like I said. He's very prolific. He puts out four to six CDs in a given year. He probably sells hundreds of these things, presumably. If it is that easy. Dozens even. Dozens even. <laughs> if, if, if it is that easy, can I do this and make my money? And most importantly, can I do it without doing any further work? Because I, <laughs> I hate doing work, and I love money. 
<laughs> so that's the quest that I set out on. And this is this talk is going to explain my discoveries along the way. So hopefully that's what you expected when you walked in. If not, you can leave. It's fine. Um, some background on how computers do music, because I think it's important. You can't get very far in computer music without running into MIDI. I'm going to talk just a little bit about MIDI because it will help explain how things work. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's a protocol for the control of musical equipment. It has nothing to do with audio and how audio is encoded or decoded or played back or transmitted or anything like that. All it is is messages between pieces of equipment like this. This is a MIDI controller that's sending USB MIDI, MIDI messages over USB to GarageBand that's working on my computer. Plugged into that. MIDI messages, an example of a MIDI message is a note on message. When I play a note, it sends a note on message. That message has a note, a note number, which we'll talk about in a minute, and a velocity number from 0 to 127. This is actually really important because if I play very softly, it sounds very different than if I play really hard. And it's not just the volume. The volume is important, but also the character of many instruments changes how hard you play them. And if you couldn't represent that in your Playback, then your music would sound like a robot, as we will soon discover. <laughs> um, obviously, you can also send a note off message. This is important because most instruments let you play more than one note at a time, and you need to be able to know which ones are going on and off at any given time. Another interesting thing about note numbering um, the MIDI specification says middle C is note number 60. This note, the note that you spend your first day of piano lesson learning to find. It says nothing about what the maximum MIDI note number is or the minimum. It is a completely wide unknown note, so you can do lots of stupid things. This is the lowest note on the piano. As you can see, I'm not out of notes. <laughs> the pianos can't make that sound, nor can they make sounds appear. But with MIDI, you can do it, and you can do all sorts of stupid things that you probably shouldn't do. MIDI can do all sorts of other things as well. You can control external pieces of equipment. You have aftertouch, which is the force you exert on the keys after you press them, which is important for some instruments and all sorts of other stuff. This is an example of a piece of hardware that uses MIDI. This is an analog synthesizer that takes the inputs from a device like this and turns them into sound. It can't make any sound by itself. It has no way to know what notes are being pressed, just like this can't make any sound without itself. This is a really, really fun piece of equipment. I wish I had one. If you'd like to give me one, that would be fine. <laughs> uh, what I do have is software. And this is a piece of software called Reason. This is one of my favorite applications of all time because it lets you create virtual racks of virtual equipment and fiddle all the knobs and make tens of thousands of dollars worth of gear come and go in an instant. You can click around and drag cables between the like virtual side. It's just the best. They even wait. Yeah, they wait. When you switch to the back, the cables wave back and forth. That's a good point. I should put that animation in this talk for the next time that I do it. Um, you can also record MIDI messages in programs called sequencers. This is a program called Cubase. You can see the musical notes are laid out vertically with a little mini keyboard on the side. And actually those little lines along the bottom, the little spiky things, are the velocity of those notes. So you can see these are some chords that are being played at, a, at various velocities. The point of all this is to say MIDI is a lot of fun. You should play with it. Um, if you have a Mac, you have GarageBand, or you can have it for $5 get all sorts of sounds and stuff to play with. A controller is cheap, or you can play MIDI notes using your keyboard keys, although that's kind of lame, but it's better than nothing, right? But after all, I am a programmer, and the rest of the, the I'm going to show you some code of some things that I've built using MIDI, and they all use this gem, Micro MIDI, which is a Ruby DSL for sending MIDI. And it actually makes a lot of MIDI complications very, very simple and very idiomatic in Ruby, which, as you all know, is the best programming language. <laughs> So anyway, we're getting a little off topic. Back to the challenge. The challenge is to build a tool that can play delightful piano music, and that's an important distinction, delightful music, based on a series of four notes. And we don't, again, we don't want to just build a tool, we want to build a startup. <laughs> this being open source bridge, I expect this message makes a lot of sense to you, right? My goal, again, is to ride around on private planes <laughs> while money just comes in and I do nothing. I think you're embracing the open source. Yeah, I think I've got it, right? Yeah, you got it. Paying, paying lots of attention. <laughs> so the first strategy um, I set out on was algorithmic harmony. In other words, training the computer what sounds nice and what doesn't. And I read some research papers from very, very smart people who are way smarter than I am from things like the Journal of Mathematics and Music. 
and the International Society for Music Information Retrieval Conference, which is a long name. <laughs> and it turns out that a lot of smart people have spent a lot of time on this problem, and they've done an okay job, but it doesn't really sound delightful. It doesn't sound relaxing. Uh, it sounds a little bit something like this. But it's not exactly it's not exactly bubble bath music. We need to do relaxation music. Um, again, we're building a startup, so let's consider our user persona, right? This is how we figure out, make sure we're meeting our users' needs. This is our user. <laughs> Steve, yeah. Steve has a duck, and Steve is trying to relax. And that stuff that I just played will not help Steve relax in any way. It'll make him very angry. <laughs> well, it should. So, what should we do about this? If we're going to build our startup, that's going to make beautiful music. I thought about this for a while, and then I decided to take my strategic inspiration from Reddit. And I, of course, like you do. And I could have also used PayPal or YouTube or eBay for this strategy because they've all used it. And the strategy is, in the very early days of Reddit, they had this problem. It turns out social networks only work when people use them and visit them and post things. So the Reddit admins were using the site all day long and posting things, but people would come to the site and they would look around and they would see that all the content was being posted by the same people. And they would rightly assume that the site was not being used by anyone, and they would leave. So Reddit fixed this by changing it so that when you, they were logged in as admins, they could create new user accounts with whatever name they wanted as part of posting the content, thus making it look like they had more users, and thus making people stick around, and eventually they were presumably able to stop doing this. Although, who knows? <laughs> so in other words, like any good start, but up to get off the ground, we will cheat. And by cheat, I mean we will utilize pre-recorded interactions to simulate real-time generative algorithms. That's what it will say in the business plan. Uh, what it means for real is that we will play back pre-generated transitions between chords. Between these four chords, we will have some pre-recorded stuff and we'll put it together. This is really actually the only genre of music you could get away with this in because everyone says it all sounds the same. And it will literally all be the same. <laughs> So it turns out this problem is actually appears somewhat complicated on its face as well. If you look at the relationship of all musical notes to all other music notes, you get this kind of crazy table. And you start thinking about, okay, we need to go from this note to that note, and then we need to switch keys, and then it gets really complicated, and that's not going to really work, because that's way too much work. Again, keep our requirements clear. As little work as possible. <laughs> um, but the, the actual truth is that we don't need to write transitions for all these because there's an important musical secret that I'm going to let you in on. And that is that all that matters in harmony in music is the relative intervals. A D major chord, oops, that's not what I want, is the same notes as an E major chord, as an F sharp major chord, shifted up. You just take the same relationships and move them up and down. So our code can do the same thing, because remember, MIDI uses note numbers. The, the numbers that MIDI uses have very little relationship with the actual notes. So by just adding and subtracting, we can transpose, we can move things around. We'll transpose using the first note of each phrase as zero. So in other words, we only need about 15 transitions to have, have the whole project done. This is a major breakthrough, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> to make this work, we need to record a phrase, which is a short bit of music that transitions from a zero to an interval, like one, two, three, something that covers that distance. We then play those back, shifting them around the keyboard and repeat as needed. So I actually did this, and you can look at the code if you want. It's on my GitHub. Um, I'm not going to say it's the best Ruby code ever. I'm a manager, not an engineer. For example, it could use, uh, like most startup code, it could use better test coverage or any tests, <laughs> um, but it works, it does actually work. So the first, um, let me show you, to make this make sense, I'll build through some of the steps that we did. The first kind of tech demo, all startups have tech demos, right? They have cool stuff that they do. Um, this is a little bit of Ruby using MicroMIDI, the gem I mentioned earlier, that essentially grabs an output, and then using that output and a velocity of 64, it plays all of the notes from note number zero to 127, each for 0.01 seconds, and that sounds like this. All right, like we're done. Like, that's <laughs> it, right? Well, okay, almost. Um, to make to make that code work, we can't just play all the notes back in sequence. That's too easy. We need to record our phrases, like I said earlier. And you might think to yourself, saving notes, saving patterns. Surely the geniuses at the MIDI people 
have figured this out. They've thought through a way to save MIDI up. And you'd be right. MIDI files are a thing. It's a format that you can save patterns of MIDI and play them back on any device you want. So I went to the MIDI Manufacturers Association website and prayed that they were better at making protocols than making websites, which they are. <laughs> and I went to download the spec. Because of course they published the spec. And I discovered not only do they not publish any electric form whatsoever of the spec, they will mail you two pounds of paper for $60. <laughs> and I, again, low cost, don't have time to wait for the postal service to deliver me paper and read that. So like any good startup, we'll just make up our own standard. <laughs> and I actually have really big news um, to announce here at the conference, here at Open Source Bridge. I feel like it's important for any startup to have like a key technology that they've invented that's at the core of their presentation, right? It helps with recruiting and it's like, oh, I want to work on that. So I've come up with a new format for saving note recording data in JSON. It's called Note.js. <laughs> it works really well. Um, I'm sure right after this conference, you can read all about it on Hacker News. Um, and you'll, you know, this is, this is going to be great. So here's what it looks like. It's essentially an array of hashes. Each hash has a note number, a velocity number, and then two time-based numbers, an offset and a duration. Both of those are in seconds, and the offset is from zero. So we consider zero the start of our little snippet. And then this basically says, play this note at this time for this long, play this note at this time for this long, and so on. And this is actually um, the beginning of a little recording of me playing this. That's it, except I think it was up an octave, so. And so on, which is like one of the three things I can play on piano. So now that we have this recorded, we need to be able to play it back. The code for this is also remarkably simple. We read our Node.js file, we go through each one of the note objects, and we sleep until it's time to play it, we play it for the amount of time, and we loop through essentially. This does not, no, this does not include velocity, which you'll hear in a moment. So this is what this sounds like. That is not what it should sound like. <laughs> and the reason is because that code, if you look at it, assumes that all the note messages are sequential which as I explained earlier, they are not. I'm playing two things with my two different hands. I'm playing, with my left hand I'm playing. So we need code that can essentially, playback code that, can, that recognizes this and is smart enough to read through the file and play it back properly. So this code is very similar. The only difference is before doing any playback, we read in all the note messages. We turn, we, we turn each note object into two distinct messages, a note on and a note off include the velocity this time because it's easy to do so. Each one of those messages has an at field, so we know when to send the message. That little bit on the bottom, we then sort all the messages by the at time, so we play them back in the right order, and this sounds. And then, and then in the playback, it goes through. It's smart enough to look at the type of the message. If it's a note on, it's a note on. If it's a note off, it's a note off. So like this. Hey. All right. Hey. Woo. It actually works. I was so excited when I got to this part. I was like, yay, this will work. I don't need to cancel this talk. <laughs> um, so yes, the tech demos are complete. Clearly, we're almost ready for funding. We need to wrap it up into the patent pending Kenny GRB algorithm, um, which has a few easy components. Step one, we're going to take the user provided chords, convert them to the relative intervals. First chord is zero. So if, if, if our random input is FACB, that becomes zero, because we all start with zero. F to A is four, F to C is seven, F to D is nine. We then take that list, convert it in, list of four intervals and convert it into transitions. So starting at zero, we need to go up four. Starting at four, we need to go up three. Starting at seven, we need to go up two, and so on. We can then play back the recorded phrases transposed properly into the starting key. We have beautiful music. Would you like to see it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's see if I can navigate that. Command F1. I did Command F1. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, for my little script, obviously we have beautiful ASCII art <laughs> because an important part again of any startup is beautiful ASCII art. Um, Jonan, would you give me four <laughs> notes? They can be any letter A through G. Four sharps too. A C F G. All right. Let's do 